Hello, and welcome to the introductory lesson for this free training series on Hyper-V from Tech Tips from Will. In this training series, I will be looking at the Hyper-V role for Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2. Throughout this course, I will demonstrate how to install Hyper-V and create virtual machines. I will also demonstrate how to manage and maintain those virtual machines once they have been created. By the end of this training series, you will have all of the knowledge necessary to administer Hyper-V in your environment. In this first lesson, I will provide you with an overview of Hyper-V as well as some of the background behind the technology. I will also provide you with some Hyper-V terminology and will briefly touch on licensing. So let's get started. The first question you may have is what exactly is Hyper-V? Hyper-V is a Microsoft virtualization product which allows you to create virtual machines, or VMs as they are sometimes known. Of course, this then begs the question, what is virtualization and what are virtual machines? To understand virtualization and virtual machines effectively, it is best to think back to what life was like before they existed. Back in the day, before virtual machines were created, if you wanted to run a Windows Server, you would first have to purchase the computer hardware itself, including the chassis, motherboard, processor, RAM, hard disks, so on and so forth. Once the hardware was in place, you would then have to purchase a Windows Server operating system, which would then be installed onto the computer hardware. If you then decided to deploy another Windows Server, you would have to purchase a second computer and a second Windows operating system. In the early days of IT, it was pretty much a case of installing one operating system onto one computer. In later years, when hardware became faster and more powerful, a new concept known as dual booting was introduced. Dual booting gave IT professionals the ability to install multiple operating systems onto one physical computer. Whilst dual booting did reduce hardware costs for some companies, it did have one major disadvantage. If you were to install two or more operating systems onto the same physical computer, you could only use one of those operating systems at a time. Let's take a modern day example and say that you have a computer and a copy of Windows 7 and Windows 8.1. You want to install both of these operating systems onto your one computer. To do this, you create two partitions on the hard disk. Windows 7 is installed onto the first partition and Windows 8.1 onto the second partition. When the computer is first switched on, you are given the choice of which operating system you'd like to boot up. However, you can only use one of those systems at a time. What this essentially means is that if you are using Windows 7, and wanted to use Windows 8.1, you would first have to shut Windows 7 down and then boot up Windows 8.1. For a few years, dual booting was the only method of running two or more operating systems on the same physical computer. That was until virtualization was introduced. Virtualization addressed many of the shortcomings of dual booting, by allowing you to create virtual machines. Virtual machines, as I like to describe them, are essentially software computers. That is, a virtual machine looks and behaves just like any other software application that you have installed on your computer. Every virtual machine you create provides you with a completely separate working operating system. This essentially means that you can have multiple operating systems running side by side on the same computer at the same time. 
When the Hyper-V role is installed onto a Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 server, that server becomes known as the host. And the virtual machines you create on the host are called guests. Once a virtual machine, or guest if you prefer, has been created, you can install an operating system onto it. It is worth noting at this point that the operating system you install onto the guest systems do not necessarily have to be Microsoft operating systems. Microsoft has worked extremely hard to make Hyper-V guests compatible with a range of operating systems. With Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2, you can install the following Microsoft Server operating systems as Hyper-V guests. Windows Server 2012 R2, Windows Server 2012, Windows Server 2008 R2, Windows Server 2008, Windows Server 2003 R2, and Windows Server 2003, providing you have Service Pack 2 installed. You can also have Windows Home Server 2011 and Windows Small Business Server 2011 Essentials and Standard as Hyper-V guests. In addition, you can install the following Microsoft Client operating systems as Hyper-V guests. Windows 8.1, Windows 8, Windows 7 Professional Enterprise and Ultimate Editions, Windows Vista Business Enterprise and Ultimate Editions providing you have Service Pack 2 installed, Windows XP Professional providing you have Service Pack 3 installed, and Windows XP Professional 64-bit providing you have Service Pack 2 installed. Hyper-V also permits you to install various distributions of Linux, including CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise, Suzar Linux Enterprise Server 11 and Ubuntu. In order to comfortably run both the host and guest operating systems simultaneously, the host server is typically configured with additional resources such as extra processor power, RAM memory and hard disk space. Remember, although the host and guest systems are technically separate computers, they are still utilising the same hardware resources, so it's very important that you run Hyper-V on a powerful machine. When you create a new guest system, you will have to choose how much of the host's resources, such as RAM and hard disk space, you would like to allocate to the guest. Theoretically, there is no limit to the number of guest systems you can create on a Hyper-V host. As long as the host computer has enough resources, you can run as many guest systems as you like. However, one thing that you should keep in mind is licensing. If you plan to install Windows operating systems onto your guest systems, just like when installing onto physical computers, these will require their own licenses. With Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard and Data Center editions, Microsoft does provide you with some degree of flexibility with creating virtual machines, so you should think very carefully about which edition is right for you. If you install Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard Edition as your Hyper-V host, Microsoft will allow you to create two virtual machines running Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 without penalty. If you later choose to install a third Windows Server 2012 virtual machine, you will have to purchase an additional license, making this edition suitable only for networks that do not require a large number of virtual machines. If you install Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center Edition as your Hyper-V host, Microsoft allows you to create an unlimited number of virtual machines running Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 without penalty. This is suitable for networks that are highly virtualized and require a lot of virtual machines. 
This concludes this introductory lesson on Hyper-V. I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson and found it useful. In the next lesson of the series, I will start to create a Hyper-V host by demonstrating how to install the Hyper-V role. If you'd like to see more Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 training videos, please feel free to browse our YouTube channel. And don't forget to show your support by liking our videos and subscribing to our channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next lesson.